Hello and welcome to the Omnex webinar, Transitioning to VDA 6.3, Vision 2023. Today's presenter is Roy Gray. Roy Gray is the manager of the Consulting Training and Quality. Roy Gray possesses a wide range of knowledge in manufacturing processes. He has spent the last 24 years working in the quality field with 17 of those years being in the automotive industry and two in aerospace. Over the course of his career, he's become very familiar with numerous manufacturing processes, including stamping, injection molding, welded assemblies, and hot forming of titanium. He's pre performed numerous internal audits for QS9000, ISO TS 16949, IATF 16949, ISO 9001, 14001, 45, 2001 and is a lead auditor. During this webinar, if you have any questions for Roy, please enter them in the Q&A box and he will get them to the best of his ability at the end of the webinar. All right, Roy, you can take it away. Okay, thank you, Miles. Okay, uh, good morning, everyone. So as uh, Miles has stated, uh, we are uh, gonna be talking about the updates to the VDA 6.3-2023. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Here we go. Trying to get this to work here. Okay, so uh, let's get started here. So, uh, a little bit about Omnix. Uh, we do consulting in um, uh, training uh, to the various uh, management system standards and you know core tools and things like that. Uh, so we we do specialize in integrating the management systems. Um, so uh, we are capable of doing that as well. Um, we are headquartered in Ann Arbor, uh, and, and we've got, uh, consultants that have served on the various committees at, uh, AIAG, uh, for the FMEA core tools, uh, and things like that. Can, can you see my screen? Yeah, it's not in the presentation view. You want to just hit the. Thought I did that. Right. Okay, hold on a second here. We have two monitors. You're in the presentation, the slideshow tab. Let you yep. select which. One. Can you see it now? Not in. 
go to the presentation view. It's where I'm at. Do you have two monitors? Yes, I do. Oh, you just might want to switch what monitor you're sharing. Okay. You're seeing the non-presentation view. Better? Yes, perfect. Thank you. Yeah, I just selected the wrong one. Okay. So, uh, as I said, we are uh, located in... Do I got the right one? Yeah, there we go. Uh, headquarter in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Uh, we also have offices in uh, uh, Europe, uh, China, India, uh, and then also satellite offices uh, in uh, Mexico, Canada. So we are located globally. Um, and we have basically six markets that we get, get into. We, we do a lot of automotive, obviously. Uh, we do work in aerospace as well. Uh, we've done uh, a lot of work with uh, various semiconductors, um, working with them, getting them IATF certified. Uh, we also have done some work in uh, uh, medical devices, and we are still doing training and consulting in regards to... Um, uh, EVAV, and also just general manufacturing. And, and as you can see, here's our, uh, if you want to get more information, you can go to our websites um, and help you there. Uh, our services, you know, we do go in and we do gap analysis uh, for organizations that uh, want to <clears throat> Um, get certified to a particular uh, management system standard. We do that. We've also do a lot of training. Uh, we also uh, perform uh, internal audits for our, some of our clients as well. So we, we do all of that uh, throughout the course of uh, that we've been in uh, business for over 35 years now. So um, Uh, and of course, we do consulting. We got uh, our own software that uh, we've developed, and you know, it's an enterprise management system. So you know, you can uh, schedule your audits in there. You got uh, uh, document management, uh, MSA, uh, and engage uh, um, calibration in there as well. So there's various modules you can get uh, with that. We also have a sister organization for uh, called Onyx Plant Tech. Uh, they do auditing services as well, but uh, we also can outsource staffing uh, for our various um, uh, clients that we have. A little bit about Onyx Systems. Um, we are. Like I said, we have our own software that we have. You know, we've got uh, BOS for uh, looking at management review, um, we are uh, we also have uh, document management, audit management, MSA, uh, gauge management, uh, also uh, TP, uh, TPM for uh, maintenance, and, and also supplier module as well. Those are just some of the modules that we have. Um, different automotive. Certifications, you know, we've got various uh, consultants that are writers uh, and have been part of the teams for writing the various uh, syst uh, ISO standards, part of those teams. Um, so we do a lot of that. And uh, so it, we, we do a lot with uh, ISO as well, I, uh, AIAG, uh, working with the various uh, organizations to help uh, write the standards, okay? And like I mentioned earlier, we do have uh, several uh, consultants that uh, are on these writing committees. 
Uh, so today we're going to be talking about the VDA 6.3 2023. Uh, this was just recently released back in uh, January of this year. Uh, so uh, it is now to the fourth edition. So basically the German and European automakers, uh, they will require their suppliers to um, follow VDA 6.3. Um, so, and during this webinar, we're going to talk about the different uh, updates and the changes that uh, occurred in the fourth edition. Uh, and also part of this is looking at software as well. Um, <clears throat> so, and, and we'll be talking a little bit about ASPICE and uh, cybersecurity for the products as well. Uh, just a little bit about me, as uh, Miles mentioned. I, uh, I've been in automotive since 1997. I've been trained as an auditor to um, ISO 9001. I uh, was, did that back in 1992. So I've been doing auditing for a number of years, and I'm very familiar with ISO 9001, IATF, uh, ISO 14001, and ISO 45001. I'm also a certified VDA 6.3 auditor as well. Okay. Um, so what is VDA 6.3? Well, it's just a, uh, another standard that uh, some of our customers may require us to uh, uh, com uh, conform to. Uh, VDA follows a lot of uh, IATF 16949. Um, so it's various clauses within that. We pretty much cover a lot of uh, clause seven in IATF and uh, all of uh, clause eight, okay? Uh, it's not a standard that you get certified to, it's just uh, customer specific requirements will require you to um, uh, follow this as well, okay? So uh, VDA is structured for first or second party audits, okay? Uh, and what that means is organizations do their own internal audits. Uh, when we talk about second party audits, that's when our customers would come in and do the VDA 6.3 audit on us. Um, and, and it's unlike a management system where we rate nine conformances, we actually give it the scores for, uh, there's 59 questions that we have to go through. And, and we give those uh, questions to score and based how it comes out, uh, you, you get a ranking of either A, B, or C. Uh, with it, uh, if you get a ranking of an A, you are quality capable, B, you are conditionally quality capable, and C, you are not quality capable. Uh, but uh, uh, within VDA 6.3, there are seven process elements. And, uh, P1, process element P1, that is for looking at brand new suppliers. It's not scored. It's done uh, with a traffic like red, yellow, or green, okay? Um, and, and we don't look at all 59 questions. We look at like uh, 35 questions that we need to answer for that. Uh, but when we are doing a, a VDA 6.3, we are basically looking at uh, process elements uh, two through seven. Okay. Um, also for additional automotive process audits that we may have to do that may be required by our customers, um, you know, layer process audit, CQI 8, uh, and then there's heat treat, plating, coating, uh, welding, soldering, molding, and casting. Uh, depending on what our organizations do, our customers may require us to do those um, additional annual uh, self-assessments to those, okay? Um, and, and then we also got the oversight bodies uh, for IATF. We got, uh, uh, and we have them in Italy, France. Uh, IATF is global, uh, VDA as well. VDA QMC is a uh, oversight body. And also the, they're part of uh, the, the develop and publish the various VDA uh, standards, okay? Uh, looking at uh, VDA 6.3, we are looking at uh, uh, the product life cycle. It's from 
uh, start all the way to uh, the end of the life of the vehicle, okay? Uh, this is something that is gonna be throughout the entire product life cycle. Um, so basically we're looking at P2s through uh, uh, P7, uh, and it can be broken up as well. We can just do like uh, program management and then the APQP processes, which is uh, would be P2, uh, P3, and P4. Uh, and then just looking at manufacturing, it would be P5, P6, P7, okay? Uh, so we, we can do it the, in various different ways as well. Um, also, you know, when, when I'm doing an audit, we can also combine P3, P4 uh, and, and look at uh, those questions at the same time, okay, as we are auditing so we don't have to keep uh, bugging the engineering manager and quality manager and production manager uh, for going through all of those. We just cover them all at the same time. Uh, so it does start from the concept, receiving the contract all the way through uh, SOP. So we'd be looking at P2 to P4 for the APQP process program management, uh, looking at uh, the maturity level uh, of the uh, product as well. And then when we get into looking at P5 through P7, we are looking at the manufacturing processes and supplier management, okay? Um, all of this will align with the uh, maturity level, okay? Uh, so, and, and there's it's seven phases in that, okay? So we're looking at it from, again, from start all the way through uh, end of life of the uh, vehicle itself, okay? Um, you, know, you have the right to use any of the process elements and combinations that's going to meet your particular needs. Uh, and you could also use VDA 6.3 at doing a special audit, whether on yourself or uh, on our suppliers, if we are having uh, issues. Okay. Uh, it's a good thing to do. Uh, I have actually done that for one of our clients. Uh, it was not a requirement to do VDA 6.3, but they used it to help them get off of uh new business hold for one of their customers. So, so it was a special one day audit that I was doing at various sites for them. Um, the different process elements, like I said, P1, that is uh, the potential analysis. And we're looking at a brand new supplier uh, that has not supplied to us. So we're gonna be looking at, uh, you know, the APQP process program management looking at uh, their manufacturing processes. So there's gonna be certain questions we're gonna be answering that. P2 is looking at project management, program management, okay? How well is the program being managed? Are we meeting the customer milestones? So, you know, we're gonna be looking at various uh, different uh, programs that are going through this particular process. Uh, when we get into P3, we're gonna be looking at uh, planning, Okay, and, and this is where we start building the uh, bill of materials, uh, process flow diagram. Uh, if, if we are design responsible, we'll be doing a DFMEA and then process PFMEA control plans and operator instructions and you know, making sure our uh, suppliers are following along as well, okay? Uh, when we get into P4, we're going to be implementing this. So we need to make sure everything's ready. We uh, are, are doing our validation. We're doing the uh, various uh, verifications that we need to do, run at rates. And this is also where we'll do our PPAP and submit it to the uh, customer. Uh, also, at the same time, we need to make sure that our suppliers have submitted their PPAPs to us um, so we can get those approved and have, be part of the PPAP proc. Um, process as well. Uh, P5, supplier management. This is how we are going to control our suppliers. It's various uh, things that we need to do with that. Okay. Um, and, and then with that, you know, how, how do we um, source our suppliers? What's the process for monitoring the suppliers? Okay. 
what, what happens when uh, you know, we have a non-conforming product? How is that handled? We need to look at various things uh, like that when we go through uh, supplier management. Uh, P6 is looking at the production processes. Uh, whatever parts are going through for our customers that require BDA 6.3, we need to look at each of the manufacturing process steps that are identified on the control plan. So we will be walking the control plan. Um, we also gonna be making sure that, uh, you know, talk about receiving. We started at receiving and we walk it all the way through shipping, okay? Um, uh, and then customer service is P7. So uh, how are we satisfying our customers? Uh, what's the process for uh, handling any customer complaints? So we'd be looking at the corrective action process, okay? We'll also need to be looking at um, uh, the uh, contingency plan, making sure that uh, that's in place and we've got the, everything, we're following all the requirements for IATF in that. Um, possible uses of the different uh, elements. So, you know, what we're looking at here right now is out of uh, uh, the uh, uh, material level assurance. So there's various stages uh, where we will be looking at, uh, you know, if it's a brand new supplier, we'll be doing a potential analysis. Um, and then when we start uh, getting into the program, uh, you know, we're going to be setting up a, a timeline of all the milestones that the customer requires and start our planning and our implementation process. Uh, so that's P2, P3, P4. Okay. Uh, and also we have to consider if we have suppliers that does the development of software or if uh, our organizations the develop software for automotive that uh, we've got a spice implemented so we have to ask some questions about a spice making sure that it's implemented and everything's being covered within that as well okay and of course with the a spice we'll be following the v model on that you know flowing down all the requirements to the suppliers uh, and throughout our organization, and then uh, verifying and validating each of those as we go back up on the other side of the V. Okay. Uh, overview of the questions. Okay, so one of the things that uh, VDA 6.3 has done this time in this edition is uh, they've given us an uh, opportunity to do uh, remote audits. Okay, and uh, so they, they've established a, uh, a table to determine if we can do it, uh, if it's suitable to do a remote audit, okay? Um, also, if it's conditionally suitable or it's gonna depend on the risk, okay? So in some cases we may have to do it, we could do a hybrid. We can do it remotely or, and then, uh, someone can also be on site doing, going through like maybe the manufacturing processes. Okay. So uh, looking at the uh, questions here, uh, starting in P2. Okay. We've got uh, six questions there. Uh, and you can see P2.2 and 2.6. Those are highlighted in blue. There's also an asterisk at it uh, after the number there. And with that, that is identifying that we have a, uh, uh, a risk to either the product or the process, okay? And, and then all six of these questions are also gonna be on the potential analysis that we do on any new suppliers, okay? Uh, P3, this is planning. So we, we got six questions here. We got a couple questions that the uh, in here that uh, has a risk to the product or the process itself. Uh, and of course, as we go through this, um, we, uh, depending on how we score, especially uh, 3.2, 3.6, or 3.4 there, if we gave those, a, those questions a zero, that's basically a knockout punch. So, uh, and no matter what your score is, you would be, uh, get a ranking of a C, which makes you uh, not quality capable, okay? Uh, in the previous version, there was only five questions in here. They've added an additional question and we wanna make sure 
that additional question to make sure we got procurement activities that they've been planned. We're monitoring them for compliance to the process as well. Uh, P4, this is the implementation. Uh, they've added a question in here. Uh, previously, there was uh, uh, only eight questions that we had to answer. Uh, 4.1, 4.4, those are, again, risks to the product or the process. Uh, and we also have uh, 4.1, 4 4.3, and 4.4 4 that are on the potential analysis. And all of these questions are also suitable to do a remote audit. Uh, P5, supplier management. Uh, there's only seven questions here. Uh, five, four, and five, five, you know, it's potential uh, risk to the product or the process. Um, and, and we also have five, one, five, five, and five, six that are on the potential analysis. Um, and, and you can also see where five, five, and five, six, those are conditionally suitable for remote. So we, we need to uh, potentially look at the risk for that, okay? Uh, and, and we do have risk tables that set up with NVDA 6.3 to uh, help you identify if, uh, looking at the risks, okay? Uh, when we get into P6, there are six sub -pro uh, process elements. We'll be going through this. Um, so uh, 6.1, we are looking at uh, the inputs that we need for the manufacturing process. Uh, 611 uh, is one of the, it's an important question, and it, depending on how this works uh, within your organization, you have to have a process for um, handing over from the APQP process to manufacturing. Okay, so we need to take a look at that. Um, and also 4.1 and our, I'm sorry, 6.1.1 and 6.15, they are in the potential analysis. And uh, 6.15, we are looking at um, any changes. So change management. Uh, change management is throughout VDA 6.3. We need to make sure that uh, how we handle the changes, okay? Whether we're initiating change, what's the process for that? Uh, what's the process when our customer initiates the change? And, and what's the process for our suppliers to initiate any changes to the product or manufacturing processes? Uh, 6.2, uh, this is how looking at the control plan. You know, is it uh, been um, implemented properly? Uh, is it being followed? So, you know, this is where we're going to start to. Um, look at the uh, uh, manufacturing processes. So, you know, we're gonna need to make sure we take a look at the process flow diagram, PFMA and control plans, look at the drawings, okay? Anything that's given to us by the customer looking for special characteristics, okay? Um, so we need to understand how those are controlled within the uh, manufacturing processes. Um, and we also have four questions that are, are on the uh, potential analysis as well, okay? Uh, six, three, we're looking at uh, our employees here. We've only got three questions and two of those are on the potential analysis, okay? Um, this is gonna be depending on risk if we can do it uh, remotely or not, but uh, we need to make sure that the employees are able to do their jobs. Um, do they know their responsibilities? Okay, so we're, we're looking at and we're interviewing the operators that are performing the various manufacturing processes. So, and, and making sure the control plan's been implemented, they're following the operator instructions. Um, so there, there's different things that we need to do uh, in this. Um, and, and a lot of this, you know, I, I'm looking at it when I'm doing my audits, I am looking at the um, uh, operators performing the, uh, their operations. Uh, also looking at um, 
uh, asking them questions, various questions, uh, some hypothetical, just to make sure that they uh, do understand the process and what happens if they do know, if they are know they are making non-conforming product. Uh, six four. This is we are going to be looking at uh, uh, the manufacturing equipment gauges. Okay, so uh, within six four, we got uh, five questions here. Four of those are on the potential analysis, um, and, and you know, four out of the five questions they are conditionally suitable for doing a remote audit. Okay, but we have to look at the risk. Okay. Uh, so, you know, again, we're going to be looking at the equipment maintenance, manufacturing equipment maintenance, looking at that. What are we doing for that? Uh, looking at tooling maintenance, okay, for production tooling. Uh, and we're also going to be looking at uh, uh, um, gauge calibrations and, and looking at the MSA studies, okay? Uh, look to see how the uh, tools are being stored. You know, what's the process that the operators know that the tool is good to use? Uh, there's various things we're going to be looking at that. Looking at the uh, workstations, you know, look at the lighting, look at 5S. Is there a possibility for mixing up parts? Okay. So there, there's a lot we're going to be looking at when we go through this. Okay. Uh, 6.5, we've got four questions to her on the potential analysis. And um, we, we've got some, for doing a remote, you know, it, we've got some uh, depending on the risk that we have to look at. Uh, but what we're looking at here in 6.5 is, you know, how well are the manufacturing processes working? Okay. We're looking for the effectiveness and efficiency of each of the manufacturing processes. Um, also, we're going to look, take a look at um, product audits, okay? What, what's the process for doing product audits? Um, also, we're going to be looking at uh, the corrective action process. What happens when we do have a non-conforming product? What's the process for that? What kind of corrective actions are we doing, okay? So looking at customer complaints, things like that as well. Uh, and then we'll get into 6.6. .6. We are looking at uh, the shipping portion of it. So need to, we got uh, four questions here. Three of those are on the potential analysis. And again, uh, these questions going to depend on the risk if we could do it uh, remotely. Um, so, well, we have to understand the shipping process. How does that work? How do you know you're shipping what the customer requires? Okay. Looking at the seeing how it's stored. Uh, where's it being stored at? Uh, looking for uh, anything FIFO, making sure that FIFO is being followed as well. Okay. Uh, look at record retention. How long do they keep these records? Where are they kept? What do they do when that particular uh, time period is up for the retention period? Okay. Um, so, that, that's all of the manufacturing processes. And, and again, that's, we're going to be taking a look at this all the way through, following each of the uh, uh, processes that are identified on the uh, control plan, process flow diagram, making sure it's all been implemented properly, um, and, and then making sure gauges are calibrated. They are, uh, we've got the various MSA studies that are required to do, gauge R&R, &R, Linear bias stability, okay? Uh, looking at the effectiveness of the process, how well is these manufacturing processes working, okay? Um, and, and then P7, uh, th this is where we're looking at uh, customer service. How well are we maintaining our customers, okay? Uh, satisfaction satisfying our customers. We got five questions, four of those are on the P1 analysis. Um, four out of the five questions are suitable to do, do remotely. Uh, and, and then 7.4, you know, that's gonna depend on the risk and how we're gonna be looking at that. 
Uh, and, and one of the things we're going to be looking for, you know, are they, is the organization certified to um, management system standard, IATS 16949, or maybe VDA 6.1, okay? Uh, looking at the uh, contingency plan, have they identified all the risks of the manufacturing processes, okay? So take a look at the, the contingency plan. Is it uh, implemented? Are they testing it? Things like that, okay? Uh, also, we need to look at the customer satisfaction. How are we being monitored with our customers? How well are we working with our customers? So take, we need to take a look at customer scorecards that are gonna be relevant for BDA 6.3. And of course, throughout VDA 6.3, we need to make sure our all personnel are qualified to do the tasks that they are required to do within their job functions. So we'll, we'll be taking a look at different things like that. Okay. Uh, the way the questionnaire is structured. Okay. So, you know, it, we get the question and of course in the book, you know, it gives us the minimum requirements we need to look for that it's uh, been implemented properly. Uh, so again, those are minimum requirements. And then they, we also get some examples of that implementation that we should be looking for. Uh, each organization is gonna be unique in that. So we, as auditors, we have to use our judgments to make sure that uh, they are meeting these uh, requirements. And that's how we would basically score each of the questions. Um, Scoring the questions. There's 59 questions that we're going to be scoring. And we're going to give it uh, 0, 4, 6, 8, or 10. Okay. 10 means, you know, everything is there. We're meeting all customer requirements. Uh, and, and this particular table here will help you uh, determine uh, each of the scores as we go through, you know, looking at the, the process or process steps, uh, looking at the product itself, and then you know, are we meeting customer requirements? So uh, if, if we give it an eight, you know, we, we've got uh, uh, minor deviations there. Um, and, and then if we give it a six, we got some significant. And then fours and zeros, we got some, a four, we got major deviations to the questions. We're not meeting majority of the requirements. And then zero, we just have nothing in place. Okay. All of these questions, they are closed questions. So as auditors, we need to uh, make them open into questions as we go through each of the audits, okay? Each of the process elements, asking open-ended questions. Keep asking the questions until you are satisfied uh, that you've got everything that you need. And based on that evidence that's been provided, whether looking at records, observing uh, through your interviews, uh, you can determine your score. Uh, some prerequisites for VDA 6.3. So we, we have to look at the uh, VDA maturity level assurance. This is going to be for new parts, okay? Um, and, and depending how, what the part is classified, if it's uh, classified as an A, uh, so, you know, we definitely have to do this with our customer. We're, we're going to do a, a self-assessment customer we may come in and do an assessment on us because we are dealing with, uh, uh, product safety. Okay. Uh, if it's a B or C classification, we carry out a self-assessment and make it available for the customers as required. Okay. There's no requirement to, uh, do this on our suppliers. Uh, if we have an agreement with our customer, we can do that, okay? And, and these classifications, again, it's gonna be following the stoplight, red, yellow, or green. So uh, depending on what that comes out, it's gonna depend on what kind of actions we have to put in place to make sure we get everything into green, okay? Um, looking at uh, A spice. Okay, so throughout uh, the VDA 6.3 process audit, if we have, uh, if we are development of software, 
Okay, we have to make sure A Spice has been implemented. So as auditors, we got to look to see what's been implemented for A Spice. Okay, and, and follow that through as well. Okay, uh, the requirement in uh, uh, IATF that we have, if uh, embedded software is being developed, that quality assurance program has been implemented, uh, such as A Spice. So we have to look at that, look at those processes, making sure those processes have been documented as well. And, and as part of the um, uh, process mapping for uh, our processes and making sure everything's implemented, okay? Um, so the, this began back you know, in, in the 90s where they came up with uh, looking at the uh, automotive spice. Uh, and then in the 2000s, it became a standard that we had to start uh, working at, implementing it, okay? Uh, so and that started back in 2005. Uh, so uh, again, A Spice, it's a process assessment module model for uh, embedded software. There's various processes that we need to make sure that's uh, implemented and, and should be integrated with our other manu our other processes that's been identified, uh, and making sure that the all process owners are aware of A Spice, even though we may have a uh, uh, system engineers, software engineers that are more familiar with it, but the process owners need to understand the processes as well. So doing any type of audit, VDA 6.3, IATF 16949, they need to be aware of how the process works um, and uh, making sure it's implemented properly, okay? Uh, and A-SPICE is gonna describe what, um, we need to have implemented, not the how, okay? So we, we need to look at that as well. Uh, three process uh, categories for A spice, okay? Uh, primary life cycle, okay? So we, we're gonna need to look at the acquisition process, looking at our suppliers that uh, has embedded software in their products that they're selling to us. And then we're going to have a system engineering process group, making sure everything's been implemented for A Spice in that, and then also software implementation or software engineering as well. Okay, so we have to look at all of those at, at a high level. Okay, you, you're not going to be qualified, or you may be qualified as an A Spice assessor. Okay. But uh, you, you have to make sure everything's implemented when we get into that. Uh, supporting the life cycle. So uh, looking at uh, supporting it from APQP all the way through production. Um, so we need to make sure all the supporting processes have been, been implemented, that they are integrated into uh, the core processes uh, of the organization. And, and then we got the organizational life cycle. Okay, We're looking at the management, okay, making sure those processes are implemented we, and they are working, uh, looking at continual improvement or process improvement. Uh, are we improving these processes in A Spice? Okay, and then also the reuse, looking at the, how are we reusing all of this as well, okay? Uh, I mentioned earlier, A Spice follows the uh, V model. Okay, so you know, on the left hand side, we're going to be flowing all the requirements down throughout the, our organization, flowing it down to our suppliers as well. And, and then going up on the right hand side, we are going to be looking at uh, verifying that everything's been implemented and, and validating those that we're meeting all of these requirements in A Spice. Okay. Uh, when, when you're looking at this, again, this is really the B model. So what you are seeing, um, th this is looking at the processes within BDA, uh, A Spice that we need to make sure are integrated into our core processes, the, the APQP, the manufacturing, okay? And, and in, even in the support as well, okay? 
we need to make sure all of this gets implemented and we verify it that it's there. Um, a spice for cybersecurity. So uh, again, we need to make sure that uh, it, where there's a requirement that we've uh, implemented cybersecurity into the products as well. Uh, we do have regulatory requirements. Um, so, you know, we got uh, uh, regulation R155 in Europe, making sure that uh, uh, the vehicles cannot be hacked in from the outside. Uh, we'll be looking at that through ASPICE, looking through the process assessment module, making sure things are there. We, we need to incorporate cybersecurity into the embedded software to prevent any uh, cyber attacks on the vehicles where the driver potentially loses control of the vehicle because they have no control over it. Someone's taken over it, okay? So it's very important that this is also part of this. And of course, uh, the cybersecurity uh, that also follows the V model as well, okay? Uh, so there's processes there for cybersecurity. We need to make sure that they're integrated into the core processes. We're meeting those, okay? Um, so there, there's a lot we have to do, uh, and we still need to make sure that everything's implemented, it's working, okay, and we are following those processes. Uh, looking at risk management. Okay, you know, there's a couple A spices. Uh, we've got expected outcomes and uh, best practices and work products. So, you know, when we're looking at work products, we're looking at those are also considered records. Okay, so we need to look at that, making sure that uh, they did what they said they were going to do. Okay. Uh, just uh, looking at the change summary. Okay, so. Uh, the fourth edition has been harmonized with uh, uh, A Spice, uh, looking at, and also the VDA Maturity Level Assurance, the MLA. Okay, uh, where we do have embedded software, whether it's our organization or our suppliers, that uh, A Spice has been implemented. Uh, assessments are being conducted. It's part of the internal audit process to make sure everything's being completed. Okay. So we're, we've got uh, specific questions uh, that we need to make sure uh, we get into. And some of these questions are in P3, P4, okay? Uh, and when we're looking at project management in P2, making sure that everything is identified on the timeline uh, and we're gonna meet customer milestones, okay? It's also been a lot of new added acronyms to the fourth edition, okay? Um, some revision to the auditor qualifications, and also uh, talks about doing remote audits, okay, or hybrid audits as well, okay. They also uh, eliminated the uh, audit process in the fourth edition. They now definitely require us, uh, the auditors, to uh, have a good understanding, been trained to the ISO. 19,011, okay? So keep, keep that in mind too. Um, we also talk uh, within this agile, the product development, you know, P2 uh, and P2.1 and P3.3, we talk about agile there, okay? Uh, Chapter eight in the third edition, that's been eliminated altogether. They're gonna be coming up with a VDA 6.6, um, .6, looking at uh, other services, okay? Um, also best practices has been deleted as well, okay? Or lessons learned as, as part of that. Uh, evaluating transport of the parts and handling, that's been omitted from the uh, evaluation. Okay, so we're not gonna be looking at that anymore. Uh, the asterisk question, some of those have been redefined. Um, and, and also they've added some additional ones in there. Okay. Uh, potential analysis, some of those questions have been reassigned uh, in the pr 
third edition was 36 out of 58 questions in the third edition that we were asking. Uh, now it's uh, 35 out of the 59 questions that we need to go through with uh, new suppliers when we're using uh, VDA uh, 6.3 P1, okay? Uh, looking at the auditor requirements. So there are three types. Uh, we got the internal process auditors, uh, we've got the supplier auditor, and then the certified auditor as well, okay? Uh, as an organization, you're gonna determine and document uh, how are we gonna, uh, uh, what's required for each of these uh, different uh, auditors that we need to have, um, and, and then maintaining that and making sure that uh, we evaluate the auditors. Uh, each of the three auditor types, you know, we have to have specialized knowledge, um, training, and, and then professional experience. Um, for the internal process auditor, we do have to understand the different quality tools, uh, VDA, MLA, the DOE, FMEAs, um, the uh, production, uh, process uh, product of approval or P PPAP. So there's different methods that we have to go through as well. Good knowledge of ISO 19,011 for you know planning, conducting, and closing out audits. Uh, knowledge of customer specific requirements. You have to understand customer specific requirements. Uh, we need to make sure as we are doing a VDA audit, just like if we're doing an IATF internal audit. Look at the customer specifics, make sure that they're being addressed. Uh, looking at the various uh, management systems, what are, is the organization certified to? Okay. Um, so uh, again, big part, part of that's going to be IATS 16949 and VDA 6.1. Okay. And then also have knowledge of uh, uh, the product and process. Uh, as far as evidence go, just need to be able to uh, show that you've had uh, some training uh, and, and you've done a qualification test. And with that, you would be getting a uh, certificate to show that you've had that training. And then having knowledge of the different quality tools and the methods, okay? For to be an internal uh, process auditor, you have to have a minimum of three years experience in manufacturing, preferably in the automotive industry. Uh, supplier audit, uh, pretty much the same, understand the different tools, uh, core tools, VDA core tools. Um, so we have to think of that as well. Uh, also having customer specific requirements. Again, you got to understand those. We need to be able to look at making sure that, uh, our suppliers have done, um, many, uh, uh, implemented and are addressing our customer specific requirements to them, okay? Good understanding of the product and processes as well. Uh, as far as evidence, you need evidence that uh, you understand ISO 19,011, okay? Uh, knowledge of the quality tools, you're gonna have to have uh, course evaluation, so uh, certificates showing that you, uh, have taken an exam, okay? Uh, professional experience, you need to have five years in a manufacturing and uh, preferably in automotive industry with at least two years of experience in quality related fields. Uh, to be a certified process auditor, uh, in order to get the uh, this, again, you're gonna go through the class and uh, you're going to be taking an exam and that exam and part of that exam is going to be written and we're going to have to do an oral as well. Okay. Uh, and, and specialized knowledge is the same as uh, the internal process auditor, supplier auditors. Okay. Good understanding of the products and processes, uh, understanding of IATF 6949, 9001. Okay. Under good understanding and customer specific requirements. Uh, and, and then as the evidence goes uh, for VDA 
you're going to have the training course. You're going to be taking uh, a written exam, a uh, oral exam. Okay, and upon successful completion of both those exams, you would receive a certificate. Um, and, and as far as professional experience goes, you got to have at least a minimum of five years in manufacturing within the automotive industry and at least two years of experience in quality related fields. Uh, competence of our auditors. Okay. Uh, a lot of this is going to be extent, you know, it's going to be developed by your organization, making sure product and process come out is a uh, part of that for our auditors. Various ways to gain different knowledge. You know, uh, we, we can talk to subject matter experts, okay, uh, when we're evaluating product or processes. So if you're going into uh, an organization and you're not that familiar, you can take a subject matter expert with you, okay? They don't have to have any training in BDA 6.3. They're there to assist you, okay? Uh, uh, do your own planning prior to uh, going in there, you know, consult with the subject matter experts, okay? Uh, many organizations will, uh, should be establishing knowledge databases uh, in various ways. That way we can take a look at uh, what's been identified, different experiences as well. And then also look at previous audits. How well did the uh, supplier score? Okay. Um, in order to capture and expand on our expert knowledge, you know, make this knowledge database to available to all of our auditors. Okay. Uh, some typical errors uh, that has occurred, you know, not documenting lessons learned uh, from the internal, looking at our internal lessons learned, not using the lessons learned. Okay. Uh, making sure we get a good understanding of the customer specific requirements, understanding our supplier as well. Okay. And then um, also looking at the knowledge database, you know, this could be made available in the form of wikis or, you know, process related list, anything like that, that's been identified. Um, and then auditors should be taking a look at that. Code of conduct for our auditors. Okay, we have to use our professional skills and our judgment. Okay, obey the law as well. We also have to continually develop. So uh, the more audits you do, you know, more, more you're going to get a better understanding of not only the standard, but only also the suppliers and uh, the products and processes that are uh, part of that. Okay. Um, we always have to make sure we behave in a way that we're not going to endanger the image or reputation of your own organization. Okay. Um, stay away from conflict of interest. Okay. Uh, also, uh, confidentiality. You got to maintain the confidentiality as well. Okay. Uh, different related training for VDA 6.3. Uh, so we do have um, open enrollment classes. Uh, as you can see, we've got, uh, uh, looking at VDA 6.3, we've got a couple upcoming classes in March for open enrollment. And then um, also we'll be doing one in July, uh, VDA 6.5. Uh, we got a couple of um, open enrollment classes, uh, one in February, one in May. So if you're interested in that, uh, uh, you know, get onto our website and uh, sign up for those classes. Uh, we also have an upcoming uh, class for the AIAG VDA uh, DFMEA, okay, for the practitioners and facilitators. Um, so we got a couple of those classes coming up too. Again, you can go to omnix.com and choose the dates that's going to work for you. Okay. Additional training. You know, we, we've got, um, you know, understanding the core tools. Uh, we got uh, PPAP, Agile, uh, APQP, uh, Lean Agile product development. We have all those courses available. Uh, so 
Again, you can get into the Omnix website, see when those classes are being offered, and you can sign up for those as well. Okay. And, and all throughout, uh, you know, we got different uh, uh, classes as well for, you know, looking at MSA, uh, VDA 5, which is the VDA MSA, okay, um, SPC, uh, contamination, VDA 19. So we also do that class as well. Okay. Um, uh, we also have understanding for A SPICE. Uh, it's also integrated with ISO 26262 for functional safety. Uh, we do functional safety um, classes as well. Uh, Six Sigma is there. We also do. Uh, uh, overview for the executives as well. So an executive overview and then understanding the different uh, uh, breakaway lean, understanding workplace organization, 5S, okay? So with that, we'll go to any questions. Uh, let's see. VDA 6.3 certification requirement, VW, CSR, requirement for quality internal staff and in automotive supply, tier one, tier two. This applies for external consultants, instructors also. Does apply for external consultants, okay? Um, VDA 6.3 is related to process audits only. Uh, yes, that is true. It is related to looking at process. That's why it's called uh, process auditing. Um, uh, next question here. Uh, if you hadn't told us about the knockout punches for the audit questions, is that identified elsewhere, somewhere else, like in the VDA? Uh, yes, it's, it's part of the downgrading rules, okay? Uh, does not matter what you, if you end up with a downgrade, uh, so, for example, if uh, one of our process elements is uh, uh, below 80 percent, okay, you know, it's going to be an automatic downgrade from an A to a B. If, if we give an asterisk question, a four, that's going to downgrade you from an A to a B, despite what you are at mathematically in, in the 90 percentile range. And, and then again, uh, if we, uh, a non asterisk question, if we gave it that is zero, it's an automatic downgrade from an A to a B. Okay. Uh, going from an A to a C, if we give an asterisk question a zero, it will uh, automatically downgrade you to a C. So that, that's where it's really identified uh, is looking at the downgrading rules. Uh, if an organization has layered process audits assessment, can they use the VDA process audit with LPA or combine them? Um, no, you couldn't really combine it with a layer process audit uh, because of the fact we're, we're looking at the, see if they are either conforming or non-conforming in a layer process audit. VDA questions are being scored. So uh, that is, uh, uh, Really, you, you could com combine it, but it's not going to be the easiest thing to do, okay? Um, X means questions are included in P1 evaluation. That is correct, okay? If, if there's a X identified under the P1 column, those questions are going to be part of the uh, uh, potential analysis. Uh, Organizations need to identify the risk in FMEA documents or use their own risk tools separately to identify. It's going to depend on what the customer requires. Okay. We do have to document uh, product and process risks in the FMEA. Okay. Uh, any other risks to the other, the, any other processes that are being audited? Yes, we need to have a risk register that could be done in however the organization decides they want to do that. Having a risk register following the FMEA, uh, you can do it that way, okay? Um, where do, does the results of the VDA assessment, it should be documented uh, in the app we should pay. Is it mandatory and the only option or 
to reuse the forms, Excel templates we have from customers. Uh, VDA is no longer has done the Excel spreadsheets for VDA assessments. They are requiring us to use the uh, VDA um, uh, auditing software, okay? Or, uh, you know, I'm next, we have developed our own VDA 6.3 assessment as well. So that's part of our audit pro software as well. So uh, you, you really need to use the app it, or use our Omnix uh, Auto Pro software as well. Okay, one of those two, and that's where the results are going to be documented, and you'll be able to print that all out into a report. Okay. Um, last question: If a remote VDA six point three audit is performed, what about the? Uh, looking at CRD, looking at the risks, you know, are these questions, is it gonna be counted or not? Uh, keep in mind when we're doing the VDA 6.3, we have to look at the risks, okay? As far as doing a remote audit, uh, we may have to make that into a hybrid audit where we can do it, parts of it remotely, or we can do, um, and then have someone on site, okay? You, you have to have confidence in the supplier when you're doing a remote audit, uh, confidence in their quality system, okay? Um, so, uh, and keep in mind when we're doing a VDA 6.3, two thirds of the questions in each of those process elements have to be answered, you know, it has to be scored. If you don't do that, those questions will not count, okay? Uh, are there any other questions? Okay. Uh, since I'm not seeing anything new. I want to thank you for your time in this. And uh, again, if you're looking for additional training or consulting, you know, uh, log in, uh, get on to imnext.com and uh, we can help you further. Thank you and have a good day.